have this array with me that contains the amount of daily rainfall in the city of Kanpur. I want to find out if the city has received 4 cm of rainfall on any day or not. To do this, I need to find out if the element 4 is present in the array or not. We often say that 4 is the key that we are searching. So how should we go about doing this? One way is to write code to scan the array elements one by one either from the left to right or from the right to left. In this example, searching from the left would be faster since the second element from the left is itself 4. But what should we do if we want to search for a different number? For example, if we are searching for the number 3, it would be faster if done from the right to left. What if the number we are searching for does not exist in the array at all, like the number 5? In an array with n elements, we will have to perform n checks before we can say with confidence that the number 5 does not exist in the array. Is there a faster way to solve this problem? Fortunately, there is a much faster way, known as binary search, but it requires the array to be sorted, say in ascending order as we have in this example here. The core idea behind binary search is extremely simple. If we are searching for a key, say k, and the element at the ith location of the array is smaller than k, then all elements to the left of that location are also going to be smaller than k if the array is sorted in ascending order. This means none of the elements to the left could be equal to k. To take an example, suppose we check if the element at index 5 is equal to k or not. There are three possible outcomes to this check. Either the element is equal to k, in which case we have found the key and we are done, or else the element is smaller than k, in which case we are assured that no location to the left could ever contain k since all of them would be smaller than k. The third case is that the element is larger than k, in which case we are assured that no location to the right could ever contain k since all of them would be larger than k. This trick allows us to shrink the search space significantly and we can continue using this trick on the remainder of the array which is a win-win situation. The binary search algorithm is an example of what is called the divide and conquer strategy which solves the problem by dividing the original problem into smaller instances of the same problem. In this case, we took the problem of searching for a key in a large array and reduced it to the problem of searching for that same key in a much smaller array. Let's take a concrete example to understand this algorithm better. Suppose we are searching for the key 1. We will maintain something called an active region within the array. Initially, the active region will be the entire array. For this algorithm, we will make use of the concept of invariants. Invariants are conditions or properties that we make sure always hold throughout the execution of our algorithm. That is why they are called invariants. They don't vary at all. In this case, our invariant shall be the property that we will always ensure that the active region is such that the key, if at all present in the array, will always lie inside the active region. At every time step, we will check if the middle element of the active region is equal to the key or not. This is very advantageous since even if this check fails to find the key, it still halves the size of the active range. So let's start executing the binary search algorithm. Initially, the active range is the entire array. So we check the middle element and see if it is equal to the key 1 or not. As we can see here, the middle element is not equal to the key and the middle element is actually larger than the key. Since the array is sorted in increasing order, this means that none of the elements to the right could ever be equal to the key either. This means we can safely discard those elements and shrink the active range. Next, we again check for the middle element of this new active range and this time we get lucky and we are able to find the element right away. Let us take another example where we are searching for the key 7. Note that 7 is not present in the array. We start with the entire array as the active range, check for the middle element and find that it is smaller than the key. This means that none of the elements to the left could have been equal to the key either. This allows us to shrink the active range. Next, we check for the middle element of this new active range and find that it is larger than the key. This means that none of the elements to the right of this middle element could have been equal to the key. 
This allows us to shrink the active set further. We are now down to an active range with only two elements. Let us define the second element to be the middle one and check for it. We find that it is smaller than the key, which means that none of the elements to the left of it could be equal to the key. However, at this point, we find that the active range has become empty. This is the signal that the key that was being searched for, in this case 7, was not present in the array at all. Note that throughout the execution of the algorithm, we continued to maintain the invariant that the key being searched for could not have been present outside of the active range, which is why we were sure that once the active range became empty, it meant that the key did not exist in the array at all. Also note that although there were 11 elements in the array, we only checked 3 of them before concluding that the key did not exist in the array. Here, we give a summary of the binary search algorithm in the form of what is known as pseudocode. Pseudocode is a way of writing down the details of an algorithm without having to worry about strict rules of any programming language such as C. As an exercise, convert this pseudocode into proper C language code. Can you use recursion to implement this binary search algorithm instead of a while loop? In the examples we saw, binary search did seem faster than brute force search, but it would be nice to quantify this observation further. The concept of asymptotic time complexity is one way to do this. It gives us a way to get a good idea of how fast an algorithm is irrespective of the machine on which it is being executed. Let t of n be a function that tells us the maximum amount of time binary search would spend when searching for a key in a sorted array with n elements. Note that the key may be present or absent from the array. As we saw, at every step, binary search just compared the middle element of the active range and either found the element or halved the size of the active range. This means that Tn is at most C plus Tn by 2, where C is the time taken to compare the middle element and update the active range if needed, and T of n by 2 is the time taken by binary search to continue searching on the shrunken active range. Note that the time C does not depend on the number of elements in the array. This will be important later. The expression that we have obtained here, T of n less than or equal to C plus T of n by 2, is an example of what is called a recurrence relation since it bounds the function t in terms of itself. We need to solve this recurrence relation to find out what the function t of n looks like. Solving this recurrence relation is actually quite simple. We apply the recurrence relation again by setting n equals n by 2 and plug the result back into the original recurrence to see that t of n is less than or equal to 2 times c plus t of n by 4. Doing this repeatedly tells us that for any positive integer m, t of n is less than or equal to m times c plus t of n divided by 2 to the power m. However, notice that once m is large enough, say m is greater than log of m, n divided by 2 to the power m will be less than 1. And t of 1 is just less than c, since finding an element in an array with a single element just requires a single comparison. This gives us a slightly messy expression for the upper bound for the function t of n. Cleaning up this expression for large enough values of n tells us that for all values of n greater than or equal to 4, we will have t of n less than or equal to 2c times log n. Apart from this unknown constant c, this tells us that the time binary search will take to search for a key in an array with n elements, in the worst case, is something like log of n. It turns out that the gurus of computer science have devised ways to clean up this time complexity expression further by the use of what is known as big O notation, which we shall study now. This is basically a way for us to hide the constants such as 2 and c in the time complexity expression such as the one we see here. Given two functions f and g on the real line, we say that f is big O of g or sometimes we say that f is order g if there exists a constant c such that for all large enough inputs, f takes a value no larger than c times the value taken by g. This basically means that apart from some hiccups for small input values, f does not grow much faster than g for all large inputs. This constant c is some positive constant that may be greater than 1 as well. Note that with c greater than 1, f may grow faster than g, 
but not too much faster. Also, the constant c must not depend on the input to the functions f and g for the big O notation to make sense. Using the big O notation tells us that the time complexity of binary search is order log n, which means that for all large enough n, the time taken by binary search does not grow too much faster than log n. Can you show that the time taken by brute force search is order n? The speed difference between brute force search and binary search becomes evident when we plot the linear and logarithmic functions on a graph. Brute force search will quickly become painfully slow on large arrays whereas binary search stays lightning fast even for very large arrays. Here are some exercises to help you practice your skills in searching. In all these exercises, we are given an array of n integers sorted in increasing order. Make sure your solutions to all these problems take no more than order log n steps to solve the problem. Do you think you would have been able to solve these problems in order log n steps if the array were not sorted? For the next two exercise problems, we are given arrays that are not sorted. Try to solve these problems in order n square time to begin with. Can you solve these problems faster than order n square if the arrays are sorted? So that is all for today's discussion on searching. Next time we meet, we will look at techniques to sort an unsorted array. Till then, have fun and do join us next time.